The seasons are changing. Under the mountain, the shadows stretch, engulfing the land in their magical depth. Silver mist, golden sun, blue waters. This is the season of abundance, with thousands of fruit trees' branches leaning with the weight of the endless tropical fruits. As the fruit ripen and the streams flow freely, we feel our inspiration growing too, and we spend each day creating. After summer's energetic rains and growth, we feel the pace slow in autumn. On these days, we calm with the seasons, following no routine but the flowing water and shifting sun. We celebrate the clarity that the softening weather brings. The creeks are full and opalescent, the sky shine golden sunbeams through the forest. The waterfalls flow over cliff faces and their waters feel so healing. Our bare feet skip across river stones and we find sparkling crystals uncovered in summer's floods. Under the palm trees, we play like children again. Autumn always reminds us to slow down. Summer here is wild, unpredictable with storms and hot sun. The dense rainforest grows rampantly, but it is in autumn that we harvest the fruits of this growth. We learn to work to this rhythm too, finding that when you slow, you can harvest the fruits of your labour.
Nature always inspires us to create, and these slow mornings always bring a new idea. We spend a relaxing morning just sitting still, watching the mist rise, collecting fruit, or pausing to take it all in. You suddenly notice all these small things, like the clouds held within the mountains, or the grasses touching your skin. Everything becomes an inspiration. It is moments like this that give us energy, creative, mental, and physical energy. A soft morning means that I'm ready for a day full of work. I give myself these calm moments as rewards to balance all the busyness of life. My pace wavers, slowing down lets me expand and find inspiration in the smallest things. And then, this pace shifts and inspires an energetic afternoon creating. I try to catch up with all of my thoughts and ideas, sketching, cutting, sewing and draping, all at full speed. So I made this skirt yesterday and I'm pretty excited about it, it's just a little kind of fairy skirt for frolicking, maybe like throw over over swimmers really nice on a hot day and I want to make a matching top that goes with that kind of fairy theme and so I think I'm going to use I have a sleeve pattern for fairy wings um, which are all these seams combined so I think I'm going to do that out of the same cheesecloth and make a top. This is the cheesecloth and honestly it is so weird for me to work with fabric on a roll because I'm always using recycled fabric, so normally I'm working with really tiny cuts and always patchworking together all these little cuts of fabric, but this is more fabric than honestly I know what to do with. I got a second hand off a woman that I think she had a clothing line and she was hand making things from it, and so it is, it is still second hand and recycled, but it's a lot of fabric, so I'm kind of excited. I can experiment more, but interestingly, I'm still working with patchwork. I'm kind of testing patterns to make out of different scrap fabric out of this fabric because I really like the way that it flows and it's quite similar to all the secondhand materials that I work with. So this is the pattern which I'm going to make it off. So you might remember last year that I made a dragonfly dress which was made out of silk and all of these tiny pieces of silk make up one sleeve which for context like normally one pattern of a simple dress is like say two three or four pattern pieces you know depending if you've got sleeves or whatever like at most maybe six pattern pieces this sleeve I, I don't even know I haven't even counted how many pattern pieces but there's a lot so it's not the easiest pattern to follow and I am planning to do it from a cheesecloth which is notoriously hard to sew but I always love a good challenge <laughs> I just spent an hour searching, maybe not an hour, maybe I'm being dramatic, but a very long time searching because I had a feeling that that pattern wasn't the right pattern. And I was right because I drafted this pattern myself, that was the first copy and then I changed it to add a lot more flair. So I'm so glad I didn't go ahead and make it on the wrong pattern, but I found it. It's a different pattern altogether. And this was the mess that I made while looking for the pattern, so now I have to clean that up. And it turns out that the pattern wasn't even in here, it was actually in the back of my cupboard. Who knows, my organisation skills are not good. We are sisters, Julia and Anastasia, and a few years ago now, we chose this life in the Australian rainforest. With the help of our animal friends, we work to restore nature's balance, garden, grow our own food, and live on the land. And if there's one thing that this life has taught us, it is to find joy and creativity in every moment. From cooking to caring for the land, creating with our hands, sewing, painting, and gardening, We've learnt to do it all with love. We wrote a book that tells our story of returning to a life lived in harmony with nature, and in it, we share all the secrets of how to live a creative life. 
You can buy it by following the link in our description or from bookstores around the world. Honestly, the secret to sewing is just notching, which is interesting that I know that since I never do it. I'm so mad at myself, I always forget, but it's basically just like adding these tiny little cuts into the fabric to remind yourself of where seams join or where like two important pieces of the pattern will meet so that when they're just pieces of fabric floating around you know why they're there and what you need to do with them but I always forget to do it I have such a bad habit <laughs> this is all just one sleeve well two sleeves because I've cut two out of each piece but yeah there's that many pattern pieces in just one sleeve so this project is gonna take a long time. I love it, I was like, I'm gonna have a nice sunny afternoon sewing. I'll just do something simple. And then here I am with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pattern pieces for one sleeve. Need to make two of them, obviously. And then I'm not even sure, I haven't even designed the bodice yet. So I don't think I'm gonna get it done this afternoon. Unless I do. So I finished the first sleeve and I love it and it's perfect and I'm just trying to decide if I want to add a cuff to it or not because I initially actually made this pattern so that it would go onto a cuff that like is cute and tight on my wrist and then I decided in the final of the dress that I made with this pattern that I didn't want that and I wanted it to just be a flowy sleeve. I'm kind of wondering if it would be a cute sleeve with a cuff that it like kind of pulls it all into place. I can't decide. Creativity is steeped in everything that we do, and one of Julia's favourite practices to incorporate creativity into every day is to make quick, tiny drawings. A small, simple sketch that reflects the colours of the shifting seasons and prompts her creative energy to flow into other aspects of her life too. I think it is the sense of calm that you gain when you sit still for a moment and feel what is around you. Drawing forces you to notice the little things, the light and beauty of the world, and Julia says that it is this simple practice that helps her to feel gratitude for each new day. I've got both sleeves done. I'm so excited. I feel like a fairy. I think I've decided not to add a cuff because I think that the rigid structure would go against the flowiness of the outfit. So I think I'm just going to add a tie that kind of ties up and is really fairy like and just, I don't know, beautiful and flowy. And I'll add that on both sides. And then I need to make the top, which I think I'm just going to do quite like a casual, maybe quite a high neck cropped. Not too fitted, quite loose fitting, um, yeah, with obviously lots of seams. These are called French seams and I really like them because they, they're actually opposite French seams, I don't know, I've made them up, but they're inside out French seams, so they make this kind of like pucker, which I think looks very fairy-ish, very dragonfly-ish. So I can't decide on the bodice of the top I want to do the same thing, or the skirt that I made matching, I actually used flat felled seams, which is another really fun but really hard technique, um, which I think really suits this light crepe fabric. So I might do that to tie it all in, because that makes all this layering so that it goes quite hard and rigid, and then it's juxtaposed against the fluidity of the crepe. So I have finished the sleeves and the skirt, so all I need to make is the bodice of the top. So. I got a basic pattern block and I just traced it to sort of start 
mocking up my own top. So this is a paper mock-up, which is a lot less wasteful than using fabric. So instead of making something and I don't like it and it's ugly and then throwing it out, this skips a lot of steps because you can make out a paper first and check if you like it. So I'm, I'm planning a really basic bodice. I don't want it to, because there's so much going on in the whole design, so I want it to be really simple. And so I'm thinking just like a little cropped top with two seams going down the bust line. And so you have to have seams that go down the bust line so that you can have darts. Um, and that's how basically garments fit to the body because humans aren't two dimensional. So you need to make it work three dimensionally. So you, you see it's a flat pattern and then you close that dart and then suddenly you have shape that goes around the breast. So that's the plan. I'm just deciding how basic I want to make it and what height I want it to be cropped at. Also, I have just noticed that the paper that I'm working with has a spider nest in it. I don't know if they're going to hatch. <laughs> There's going to be thousands of babies if they do hatch. In order to close this dart, I'm going to create just a really simple seam that just goes up the body and I'm going to make it in the same style as these seams. I think I'm also going to add the same seam here so it has all these kind of like segments coming down on a bit continued from the fairy sleeve. Thank you for watching and you can purchase our book by following the link in our description. The music in this video is by Ruby Rogers and you can find her links in our description too. Thank you so much to our patrons, your support means so much to us.